currently the problems that are addressed by science mm -hmm. are dictated by who's in science, right? Mm. Who is at the helm of what gets funded, what right. questions what gets problems, answered. What problems are important to solve. Exactly. Mm. Who determines that is the people who are in science. And so that means the problems that exist in communities where there aren't many scientists, yeah. those problems are never addressed because they are never ranked as high priority. Not at the and table. So, exactly. So in yeah. order to attack unmet medical needs, or unmet you know, needs that are uh, global, yep. we need more scientists of every single background. For we need sure. to diversify science in yeah. the same way we diversify our thoughts. Because yep. we know different solutions when they come to the table is the most effective way to address a problem. Welcome to The Technical Creative, a show produced by Still Media. I am your host, Dr. Nehemiah Mabry. This show is all about career growth and development in both the technical and creative spaces. My guest today <laughs> is Dr. Mook. If you want to hear about his journey from Zimbabwe to the stakes, if you want to hear how his brand Stimulator connects hip hop and pop culture to biochemistry, and man, if you just want to have a good time, stay tuned on The Technical Creator. First of all, let me just say Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to everybody out there. It's 2024, y'all. I'm excited because we are back with The Technical Creative. I am here on set. And this is a special episode. I'm gonna tell you why. Because the person that is sitting in front of me right now, uh, I don't know why I'm doing the intro right now. I just, I just got to. I normally do the intro at the end. <laughs> the person in front of me right now is someone whose energies, I, whose energy I have felt on many occasions. But this is the very first time that I've met you in person. Shout out to Dr. Mook, aka the Stim Stimulator. Ooh. What's up, man? Let me get a bow. Good <laughs> to see you, so man. Thank you so much for having me here. Welcome to me. the Technical Creator. Thank you, thank you. How are you doing, man? It's so great to have you, <clears throat> to be here and actually see you in person. Like, of course, ah, it feels like it's been a long journey. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Only a matter of time, man. You have done like just an incredible job of creating a vibe online, right? Like, I remember we've had events. You've been in the comments, yeah. do your thing. <laughs> we talked about off before the camera start rolling, how we did an Instagram live yeah. interview during the pandemic. So I'm just and super I feel happy. Like we didn't you. even properly say that. Honestly, like, Dr. Me, yeah. CM Media, you were my first person to actually, like, reach down to me and say, hey, really? let me interview you and see what you are doing and kind of get at least my rap together. So that was my first Instagram Live really? like, on that scale. Wow. And so I, I, I'm super grateful for you to even like, give me that platform. Oh, man, listen. And ever since then, yeah, the ball has just kept on rolling. Now so you... it's full circle now in, in person to meet you. Yeah, Listen, man, I didn't know that. I, I have to correct you in one yeah. thing, though, because mm -hmm. you said reach down. I didn't reach down, brother. You were always, you always had it. The world just didn't know yet, right? That was a reach across, I if anything, I right? Yeah, yeah. So you are uh, Zimbabwean. Yeah, yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. You've mm. been in America for, at this point, what, 12 years? Yeah, 12 years. I came in 2009 years. for my undergrad. Yeah. This was at Claflin University yeah. in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Orangeburg, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was my first time in America. Yeah. I was coming to do my bachelor's in yeah. uh, biochemistry. Yeah. Yeah, and so Claflin University was my first stop in America, and I was there for four years. So did, how did you, like, what was sort of the process of coming here? Yeah. Did your family move here? Did, were you on punishment? You know no. what I mean? From, what was it? Yeah, I came by myself. I've been here by myself since 2009. Right. Um, you know, Zimbabwe's political situation is well yeah. documented over yeah. the last, you know, 30 years. Yeah. It's been off turmoil and strife and mm -hmm. poverty. Um, and so there's a huge push for teenagers usually to try and find opportunities outside of the country. Okay. So I was quite fortunate um, that Claflin University had a great recruitment department and they right. recruited across, you know, the globe and especially in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Um, and I found this opportunity where they were offering a scholarship incentive. It was really uh, $1,500 mm -hmm. <laughs> to cover a portion of your tuition, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a drop in the ocean. Right. Well, especially now Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> it's going to be like 40000 <laughs> so right. But it was the first time somebody offered me money for education. Wow. So to me, that was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You think I have <laughs> enough <laughs> or what it takes to actually complete a degree and you are willing to hedge your bet on me by wow. giving me some money? Yeah. So we will we will see what we can do. And so my parents and I, you know, really worked really hard. That's the first time I had a, my first job as a teacher. Right. And one of my mom's local colleges yeah just teaching computer literacy at the time mm -hmm. uh, trying to raise that money and my mm -hmm. parents were trying to you know <laughs> hustle also to raise the money they sold a car they did all kinds of stuff to right, kind of get that right. money and eventually they gave me you know enough for the tuition and the flight and they said best wishes if wow. this runs out you come right back home and that'll be the end of that wow um, so they're like we don't want to hear no more about dreams after like, yo, this. We, we, we we put it all on the line we invested in you exactly and now you landed at Claflin University mm -hmm. uh, HBCU yeah. Orangeburg, South Carolina see uh, you hey alright see you I remember you telling me how you, you got there and you, yeah. and you were like man 
So a lot of a lot of black people. You said you said that you uh, and obviously you know you came from Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. but in America, yeah. Did you did you know that it was an HBCU? It sort of had that type See, of. I had such a great misunderstanding. So okay. I had, obviously you know all the packets and literature say HBCUs, say yeah. historically black college, yeah. And I interpreted historically black as in used to be black, you know. Oh. <laughs> and so but back in the day, exactly yeah. back in the day, and everything you see in the media when you're in Zimbabwe about America mm-hmm. is really white centered. It yeah. is not really black centered. Right. And so right. Right. I had no, you know. It didn't click. You was like, I'm going to America. Right. The media looks like this. It's probably going to look like that at exactly. my school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to come to New York. I thought I was arriving <laughs> and it's going to be like a yellow taxi cab and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I arrived in Charleston. It's like, what is a yellow taxi cab? <laughs> oh, man. You definitely went in New York. Exactly. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I was in Charleston and then took a bus, a Greyhound bus to yeah. Orangeburg, made my way to Claflin. And as soon as I got there, I was like, oh, I don't want the refrigerator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I saw the campus was uh, like, like 95% black. And yeah. I was like, okay, all yeah. right, cool, okay. Uh, and then I started getting an introduction of what that would be like. And it ended up being such a really good decision because yeah. I I had to acclimatize to America, mm-hmm. but I didn't have to acclimatize to racism just quite quickly. Right, right, right. You sort <laughs> so of had, had inter- a little buffer. In, right. <laughs> <laughs> Intermediate stuff. Exactly. A primer course, basically. A primer course. <laughs> and I mean, HBCUs in general, this are, they're renowned for this, right? They're pretty intimate settings. Yeah. You know, there's a better student to professor relationship. Yep, yep. And so that I found that to be super useful for like my advisor. Mm-hmm. I, I met with my advisor constantly about career development, about mm-hmm. choices, about mm-hmm. my major. Right. My professors, if I would get something wrong there was just like an office hour away to talk to you right. know it, you know after matriculating from Claflin and going to a PWI University of Washington you yep. know go Husky Pride yeah all right that is a far cry from the uh, 2000 in to so many ways in students. so many ways <laughs> so and, and, and let's talk about that because you you, yeah. you you shared kind of the cultural experience and that's great because yeah. again South Carolina mm-hmm. Washington State totally mm-hmm. different parts of the country okay. Totally different sizes yep. of schools, totally different demographics of the schools. Yep. Like, yep. it's just so much, Vastly right? different, yeah. But your line of work, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming, was it biochemistry originally? Yeah, yeah, biochemistry. And so I chose uh, biochemistry in the very beginning okay. because, well, I wanted to be a medical doctor when I arrived to America. I was okay. like, okay, I'm going to do biochemical course, uh, biochemistry courses so I can uh, ace my MCAT. It was like pre-med in your mind. Pre-med in my oh, okay. mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I discovered research. I was like, oh, wait, first of all, I get paid to do this? Yeah. <laughs> to do to answer questions that I'm just fascinated about? Number right. one. Two, I can do this as a career. And if I go to school, they will pay me to get the degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're doing, you're playing, right? Because exactly. you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I was going to do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because that's just why I am. Right. now I'm being paid for it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, compared to going to med school where you pay, you know, $50,000 a year uh-huh. minimum mm-hmm. uh, in terms of tuition and hoping to get the degree. In. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then ultimately it might not necessarily be something that you actually want. And so once I discovered this new career path of, you know, essentially getting a PhD in research, right. I became super focused on that. And so for the four years that I was at Claflin, I had an internship every summer right. at different schools. I yeah. was at Yale University twice. I was at Purdue nice. University in Indiana. I was at Clemson University. So you were traveling <laughs> around because that's what I was going to yeah. ask you next. Like, mm-hmm. how did you even make that jump? But yeah. you sort of were, ever since you came to the States, you were experiencing like different parts of the country. You you were, I guess, an explorer in many in many, many ways. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would owe that to again to that HBCU culture. Okay. So my advisor, Dr. Nicholas Panasic. Okay. Uh, from day one, he literally was like, "Oh, you're going to do great things." Uh, hey, shout <laughs> out to us... shout out to the good advisors out there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to your advisors. Have <laughs> yeah. a good relationship with your advisors because they can really, you know, show you the opportunities that are available to you, and then mm-hmm. you can decide where you want to go. And that's exactly what he did. Like. We would have, you know, sessions about, okay, what do you want to do, you know, instead of what can you do? Because the assumption was you can do anything you want to do, right? but you just need to know what the options are. Right. That's it. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, he's the one who'd always supply, uh, you know, like, okay, here are internships that are available in this area. This is what you kind of need to do to meet the, requ- the requirements yep. or the prerequisites in order to apply for the internships. Mm-hmm. Uh, he showed me how to write a personal statement for the first time. Oh, <laughs> right. That's daunting when you don't know, like, what do I write? I, you know, right. yeah, yeah. And so that's what, yeah. so was University of Washington, that was a PhD program, mm-hmm. right? How did you- so, so, yeah, University of Washington was uh, shortly after Claflin. So I matriculated Claflin in 2012, okay. and then I worked for a bit. I did a post back at the oh, company okay. that I actually work at now. Uh, <laughs> so I did a post baccalaureate internship, <laughs> which was about a year and a half. 
at a pharmaceutical company called Novartis. And so this was in Boston. Okay. Again, another opportunity from Claflin. Claflin. Yeah, yeah. Over, and that's the thing. Like, you, you didn't have to worry about getting lost yeah. in a sea of people. I mean, Claflin was, exactly. was 2000. And my, mm-hmm. I went to HBCU, too. Yeah. I told you. Yes. About the same amount of people, same same size. size. But when you got to the University of Washington, though, mm-hmm. um, what was sort of the... I know the work was the same. The passion was the same. Yeah. But what type of changes do you feel like you had mm-hmm. to make in sort of your approach? Was yeah. there any? Well, by this time, I feel like I also had changed as a person. Okay. Because during that post-baccalaureate internship, uh, which was pretty focused on how to get into grad school. Okay. And so that was the entire focus of that program. This was led by uh, Dr. Anastasia Award. Yeah. Um, she's also uh, from a historically black college. Yeah, uh, yeah, she yeah. was at NC Chapel Hill. And okay. so yeah. <laughs> her mission was to recruit students of color and to really kind of give them opportunities that are available um, to to uh, future scientists. Yeah. And so she crafted this program where we did GRE courses, mm-hmm. uh, took some classes at Harvard, MIT, because it was in Boston, right? So you're in the biotech right mecca. There. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And while you're working there, you're also trying to figure out what biological questions you're interested in answering in your PhD career. Because mm-hmm. people don't realize this, but a PhD is kind of like a, you know, like a life sentence. <laughs> like, Bro, it's kind of like a, I'm telling you, listen, <laughs> like I, I tell people all the time, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough, <laughs> period. That's if you're doing what you like. Exactly. Like if you if you're doing something you don't like, it's gonna feel like torture. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah. but you know, it's so because it's uh grueling, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to get into it knowing what you want to do, knowing exactly. what your outcomes are going to be, knowing what you want to do with the degree afterwards. Because yeah. ultimately, yes, it's just a piece of paper. It's yeah. really how you navigate through that program okay. that really influences later on. So by the time I got to University of Washington in Seattle, uh, and became a husky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My rotations were very much focused on okay, what are the skills that I need you were, to acquire? You were yeah. clear, man. You were mm-hmm. clear. And by the way, you, University of Washington. That's I think our mutual friend uh, Maynard. Did Maynard go to you? Yes, you Maynard. Shout yes. out to the hip hop MD, hip hop yeah. scientist out there. <laughs> yeah. So you did there. Shout it's out to him. The yeah. company that you were working at. Helped you get there, and then they hired you back now. So you're back in Boston? Well, so, or? no. So so I did six years in the University of Washington. I say I did because it sounds like it's a princess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I did a bid of six years. Did, no, but it really, it was really a lovely program. Yeah. Um, uh, after my rotations my first year, I was able to land a permanent position in uh, Dr. Baker's lab. Uh, he is the premier protein designer in right. the world. Uh, wow. His lab, which became the Institute of Protein Design, now houses about 200 scientists. Yeah. It's the largest biochemistry uh, lab in the world. And so uh, I was fortunate to really learn the the skills of computational design and then wet lab procedures and experimental uh, v- evaluation of proteins um, during that time. And then during the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> when things were, you know, kind of up in the air, getting haywire. Yeah. And at that point in time, I was now a postdoc yep. in that same institute, but under Howard Medical Use um, HHMI program. Yep. Um, I realized, okay, I kind I love science, yeah. but I don't love everything about academia. Mm. I need to find a way to be able to do my science in a way that's not limited by uh, the academic confines. Right. That is, you know, publish or perish, you know, try to find funding otherwise you can't do your science yeah yeah <laughs> these two things are solved in the industry world you know right. like industry and pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies they yeah. directly have a product and so uh, your science is fully funded you don't have to right. worry about making gels <laughs> you can purchase those and so during the 2020 i started doing my search for a, a job um and yeah my first idea was novartis because you know i had had prior experience there i knew the work culture i knew um, the impact of the science. And so yeah. I wanted to check out if there are any jobs that are suitable for me during that time. But oh. I didn't want to go back to Boston. Oh, okay. I cannot do the cold. cold I cannot I do know, the cold, right? Because it's not, it's not cold at all in Zimbabwe, is it? No. Man, and then no. in South Carolina, we know. And, okay. Right. So you didn't want to go back to Boston. So so where are you now then? What's, yeah, what's... so I am now based in San Diego, California. Oh, man. Perfect which, weather. Exactly. Listen, San Diego. Sunny San Diego. <laughs> which is one of the three sites uh, or three campuses of Novartis that are in California. Ah. Um, and so there are about five global campuses. Uh, the headquarters is in uh, Basel, Switzerland, yeah. which is a beautiful campus. I've been there <laughs> once before. Switzerland. And then the uh, American sort of uh, headquarters is in Boston, Cambridge, and that's yep. where I did my yep. internship. But uh, we also have uh, campuses in Emeryville and then two in San Diego. And so I found a position at this uh, campus in San Diego, and they were looking for somebody who had exactly my skill set. It was computer-aided drug design. Perfect. It was <laughs> perfect. I oh, was like, man. oh, this Listen, is exactly what I was training first for. First of all, all right, there's a lot to unpack here, and yeah. we're going to get into a lot of stuff, right? But before you, I get there, though, before I get there, if you could give sort of like a mantra or a theme 
to label your academic journey from South Carolina to UW to your PhD and post back. If you were mm. to give it a, a sort of a, a one word lesson summary on that, just that part of your life, just that part. Of your life. What wow, would you that's say? A, that's a tall ask. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> it's a lot, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to do one day like that. <laughs> I'm just curious though, because you had that that is a lifetime worth of changes right there for I some think, people. I think I would say the word that uh is focused is mentorship. Okay. I think mentorship has influenced my career trajectory in a way that I could never have imagined. Mm-hmm. Because yes, I you know, it's my life, so yes, I yeah. <laughs> I went through the journey. Yep. But really it was the work of several mentors who guided okay. me throughout that journey from Dr. Pas- Panasic on the first day, yep. Dr. Tisdo, who was the president uh, during the time I was at the, at Claff University, Dr. Harris, Dr. Verde Tisdo, so yeah, many yeah. so many mentors at Claflin and then when I moved on to Novartis, Dr. Award uh, Dr. Michael Acker, yeah. several individuals who you. helped me write letters of recommendation yeah. and find out what grad schools to even apply to, yep. why to pursue biological questions that I'm interested in, highlights Dr. Baker's lab that I ended up actually being in, uh, Dr. Marcos, Dr. Yeah. Basanta, several people who helped me while I was getting my PhD, Dr. Rocklin, and then eventually I now- you. Listen, I, I, and they all need a shout out. They yes, all need yes. a shout out because you write like- it's not just independently you yeah. and you, I mean, you came to a totally different country. Mm-hmm. So you had to rely on people who were essentially like, you know, angels along your journey yeah, yeah. in various aspects of what you're doing. Um, but not only that, I feel ahead. like most students of color, yeah. that is the thing that we are, it's one of the things that we are missing. Right. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. there is a very small percentage of people of color who get higher education degrees in, um, in STEM, STEM right. Period, yeah. And then get, you know, opportunities or job opportunities in STEM, it's even less, right? Yeah. There are very few black folks who ha- yeah. are, are scientists within uh, within industry or even academia. Yep. So that directly has a impact on the generations that come after. Right. So we, like, or at least, you know, speaking, I'm sure. For Nikki sure. Might say I, I, as well, can, I can agree. Didn't, I, my parents were not scientists. Yeah, yeah. When I told them I want to do biochemistry, I was like, by what? Yeah. <laughs> You know? By who? And yeah. when I would have problems with homework, you yeah. know, in, in high school, of course they can help. But right. once I got to college, to a certain I was level, it's like I don't know what you. I, my, I don't I know what you're doing, baby. I just exactly, give me your best. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you got a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so even when you're picking careers or picking, you know, majors, all kind of stuff, you have no one to really talk to. So you have to rely on the network and in the community right. that is, you know, a. Uh, 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 you know, within your field. And that's right. where mentors really yeah. play a key role, particularly for a student of color trying right. to be a scientist. Yes. And so that's why, you know, I think I highlight that term mentorship because it really had a huge impact throughout my career. I don't think I would be here without it. Yeah. 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 That's good. And that's what you're doing here, right? Like, yeah. I mean, the yeah. Stem Media Network is an that's, example of exactly listen, what we're talking about, listen, man. That, this bro, is awesome. You already know I agree. <laughs> I, I had to let it brief a little bit, Joe. That's all I had to do, man. That, he's speaking my language, man. And that's, and that's obviously, that's what yeah. we're doing, man. Mm-hmm. That's what you've been doing. Yeah. And there's so many ways to do it because sometimes in our locale, mm-hmm. our proximity, we're not in close proximity to people that we can relate to a whole lot that can maybe speak our language or things that we feel comfortable enough to kind of go and say, hey, help me mm-hmm. out here and there. Mm-hmm. And that we already have a barrier with the with the subject matter itself, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. as accessible as we can make it, as relatable as we can make it, the better. Exactly. Right? And you're doing this online. Uh, you know, I'm doing it on this platform and in so many ways. And um, it brings me to another aspect of who you are, man. Yes. You are Dr. Mook. A.K.A. the Steam You Later. Yes, yeah, Steam You Later. Tell me a little bit about that, man. Where did that name come from? If anybody follows you online, mm-hmm. what you know? What is? What, tell me. Just give me the origin of the Steam You Later, man. Yeah. So Steam You Later is a you know catchy name. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink, nod. Name uh, okay. to stimulating STEM students okay. through arts, and mm-hmm. so Steam is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Right. Um, and I adopted this term because of my uh, course that I have been pitching for a while now, exactly to relate to students and meet them where they're at right. with relevant materials. Yep. Um, it's a course called Hip Hop Biochemistry. I launched it in 2018. And in fact, that's how we. That's <laughs> right, bro. That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> first, uh, start that talk, man. Hip Hop Biochemistry. I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And Hip Hop Biochemistry, I basically came up about it at the end of my um, grad school. So this was uh just before I defended. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to think, how do I explain my PhD to, again, people who do not have a science background, right. who do not even know that you can get a PhD in this in this area or in this field? Yeah. In particular, I was really thinking of my parents. Like, oh, wow. how do I have this conversation with them yeah. about what I do? I yeah. make molecules from scratch. Yeah. 
You like, create molecules. I create <laughs> molecules on the Designing computer. Molecules. And then I test them in real life. And eventually they become drugs that we inject wow. into people. Like, wow. how do you break that down to somebody who does not necessarily have a science background, but they appreciate several things within that journey? Yep. So I started thinking, okay, well, the most examples that we have in our textbooks, in our literature, yep. are really examples that are based on cis, straight, white, male stereotypes, right? Yeah. Sports, metaphors, yeah. car Typical. metaphors, which is all fine. That's all great. Right. But- you know, in order for me to learn about trajectories in physics, yeah. why is it that I have to find out about cricket and how many innings there are in the ah, match? Right. It's like, Whoa. man, I'm already trying to learn this about chemistry. Now I got to learn about, you know, right. cars. I'm not even into cars. Like, I don't, this is not helping me. You're giving me two things to learn now. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like it is a source of exclusion within yeah. our, oh, our wow. fields, right? Wow. Because yeah. it's like, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, and there are a lot of people who are just not interested in these topics, right? right. And the whole point of an analogy of an example yep. is to take something that is known and relevant to the student and then help them relate it to something that's more difficult and that's grasp this difficult yeah. concept. And so if they don't know the example the way it's deriving from, or if there's a subset of students who are not interested in sports and don't get the sports metaphor at the very beginning, yep. you're excluding them off bat. Right, so right I was like, yeah. okay, well, let's keep those examples, but let's add more. Let's add more examples that are more relevant to a larger set of students. So I decided to use pop culture, which yep. by definition is popular, popular culture. culture. More, more people so, are, are know about it. More people, more know, people about it. Yeah. Who know about yeah. it. Use that uh, and derive examples from there to teach about biochemistry, which is what I love, yeah. molecular biology yeah. and small molecular biology topics that I think influence everyone's life every yeah. single day Facts. and now introduce them in a new and fun way. Oh, man, listen, let me tell you why that's so dope because <laughs> we have in the middle of our podcast, uh, usually we have an interactive segment. Yeah. And since I knew you were coming on, oh. we got a new segment here. Ooh. Uh, shout out to Steph. Steph, this is a new segment. So shout we gotta out, get Steph. A, we got to get a new graphic for this, uh, Joe. And this segment is called just give me the vibes. Like, just give me the light. Yeah, but it's just give me the... Hey! hey. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba ah. All right, let me break it down for you. Here we go. Yeah. This is what give me the vibes is. I am going to share with you... I'm going to say a basic biochemistry concept, a okay. chemistry concept. Mm -hmm. Your job is to explain it very concisely, as okay. much as you can, and then pick a pop culture or hip-hop song. Okay. That matches the vibe Love this. of this particular concept. You ready? So hip hop by chemistry. Okay. There we go. go. <laughs> hip hop by chemistry. There we go. Uh, AKA uh, you are stimulator, Dr. Mute, AKA DJ Mook. DJ Mook. Hey, okay, so just give me right the box. All right, here we go. Little house. No, number one, number one, number yeah, one, number one. Yeah. Let's talk about explain um, enzymes, how enzymes work mm -hmm. and their importance, and then give me the vibes. Yeah, well, so first up, enzymes are molecules, biological molecules that are also known as proteins mm -hmm. in the category of proteins. And they speed up reactions, very similar to what rappers in the hip hop culture do for uh, our culture. They mm. speed up our culture. They influence our culture through music, through lyrics, through, you know, activity. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, yeah, enzymes you can think of them almost as rappers. Yes. Yeah, so. There you go. Speeding up. Double the cadence. Oh, exactly. Ah, exactly. Ah, I love the vibes. I love the vibes. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So you take somebody like a slow rapper, like maybe a, uh, who's a slow rapper? Who's a like, slow rapper? Like, J. Cole. J. Like, Cole. Yeah, 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 but J. Cole yeah, speeds yeah. up his cadence every night. So he, he maybe does. He, he does, does it, right? Yeah, he's, vers he's, vers he's versatile. He's versatile. Yeah, so yeah, he'll, so he'll yeah, go yeah. kind of like laid back mm -hmm. and then he'll like double his cadence. He yeah, definitely he does, does that. Mm -hmm. uh, like an enzyme. <laughs> like an enzyme. <laughs> Shout out to J. Cole. Hey, J. Cole, if you want to come <laughs> on the show, you don't stay too far from here. Come so. through. Yeah. He, I think he has a house here in Raleigh, so we need to work that out. All right, here we go. ATP and energy storage. Yeah. So ATP is also a biological molecule. This is the... A generator of the cell. It contains all the energy and generates a lot of energy for the cell. Yep. Uh, I would say ATP as a storage molecule it would be something like like a producer who makes the beats that energizes hey. the singers and the artists within the world. So like Lil John, made it. Mike Will yeah. made Lil <laughs> Little John, Little yeah, John. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so ATP is, is like Lil John on the track. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that was bad. <laughs> Sorry, Lil John. Uh, we well, we got you. I love it. I love it. He's bumping with it. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Um, DNA and genetic information. Yeah, well, DNA is the source of all information for okay. all living in, in, organisms. You all can right. think of DNA almost as a manual okay. that you, our bodies have to read or our cells have to read in order to know how to replicate, how to make more cells, how to make more molecules that will feed themselves. It is the source code for everything. So I would really say 
the great legends of our hip hop era, Ooh. like Nicki Minaj, <laughs> is DNA at its core. She writes <laughs> hip hop at the very basis. And that actually, while we are here, let's, uh, listen, let's I'm go laughing ahead. because I knew he was going to bring Nicki Minaj ahead. up let's at some go point. Ahead. Go ahead, go I'm ahead, Nicki Minaj. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We're here. We're here now. We're here. Go ahead. Talk I about it. I am a full barb, and so we're right here. <laughs> let's talk about it. Yep, yep. Um, it is the new year, yes. and we have just celebrated Nicki yes. Minaj's. Fifth album debut, Pink Friday 2, right. which was legendary. Oh, my okay? goodness. This is a sequel to Pink Friday, which yeah. was the one that she released in 2010, yeah, yeah. which spurred on this entire hip hop field for women. Like the number of women that are now existing currently mm -hmm. versus to when Nikki came out. Yeah. If that's not the source of all code, I don't know what is. Like, Nikki oh, is writing man. culture. I see. You're right. <laughs> like DNA. Like DNA. <laughs> Bro, listen. All right. We got, we're going to stay on Nikki a little bit. We're going to stay on Nikki. Give me give me like a go-to Nicki Minaj song or bar or whatever that you've used to explain other things in, in biochemistry. And you got any go-to bars or songs that you can bring up with Nicki Minaj? It's so many. Man. I know. It is so <laughs> many. Know. These are these are like these are like layups for you. I already know. Oh but my gosh. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. I think everybody is familiar with Monster. Yeah. Monster first, obviously. Crazy. Right? But Crazy people bars. really don't talk about some of the more nuanced songs, right? Like yeah. "Fly" with Rihanna, yeah. Yeah. where she literally describes how. Uh, she's charted her own path as uh -huh. opposed to following the path that other people are prescribing to mm. her. And I think this is something that students of color are doing in STEM. Yeah. We are following our own path. We're charting yeah. our own path because it didn't exist before. Yeah. You and I, look yeah. at us. We're yeah. doing a podcast on, on STEM. I didn't see any of these like, when we were growing up. Yeah, okay. yeah, I did. Imagine if we had seen something like this when we were right. growing up, how that would have impacted us. There would be more black scientists like you and yeah, I. Yeah. Similarly, there are now way more female rappers yeah. in the yeah. game because Nikki charted that yeah. lane you know like she said uh i am not levitation because mm -hmm. the song is called fly yep. i am not levitation i am fly like right i, fly. I represent an entire generation yep. yeah which she does yeah 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 i mean that song yeah. that song is inspiring too whenever i, I came to win yep. I feel like I'm about to like go out into the arena and be like, and just take <laughs> off, right? No, I love you. And then her, and then her going back yep. to the cadence, like the way she starts picking it up at the mm -hmm. end. Nikki, oh, yeah, it's all right. about you know people try to take a picture and then crop her in. Mm. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I'm the whole picture. Ooh. You don't crop me in. <laughs> I create my own picture. Yeah, like, so, yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. I got a couple yeah, yeah, more. I got a yeah. couple more. All right, here we go. Um, break down uh, biochemical signaling. What is that? Yeah, biochemical signaling is how our cells talk to each other, and so oh, okay. the molecules that are in our bodies and the molecules in general, their purpose is to basically be almost like the language mm -hmm. of our cells, of our bodies, or for even in plants, plant cells, and, yeah. you know, animals, animal cells, the chemicals that exist, biochemicals, act as conduits, as language between each other. And oh. so signaling is really, if you think about it, um, like podcasters, like you and I, Boom. or culture curators yeah, yeah, yeah. who work to really intermediate between culture and the general public, breaking right. down lyrics like we right. were just doing, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. breaking down culture yeah. and bringing it to the masses. Hip hop, hip hop, <laughs> hip hop. <It's>, uh, <laughs> so, like Joe Biden, I guess, is a, is a self signaling example. He's signaling. <laughs> and Nick Cannon, even. Yeah. Nick Cannon. Hey, well, listen, speaking of Nick yeah. Cannon, mm -hmm. you had a recent opportunity to be on his, his show, The Daily Cannon Show, I right? Sure did. Yeah. Recent, I say recent, but, you know. Life changing. Changing Life opportunity. changing opportunity. Oh yeah. my gosh! To meet him in person, together with the entire Daily Cannon crew, yep. was a life-changing moment for me. Honestly, I don't even. <laughs> I still don't believe it. I tell, tell the story. Haven't. Tell the story because what you were. Because yeah. listen, man, I told yeah. you you have energy. You have a way of people can feel energy through the screen or mm -hmm. digitally with you. Like you're, you're one of the people. Like there are people. So we brought a Maynard. He's someone who has awesome. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. Tina LaCC, who hosted yes. our show on us. Fantastic. Tina. Shout out to you, Tina. Yeah, shout out. Man, you, you too, man. You, you are one of those thank people you. where it's like, it. you can yeah. feel yeah, yeah, you yeah. online. So what, what happened? Were you kind of like just an yeah. audience member with them? Well, how did they, how did you get their attention? So it goes back to Amazon's uh, now defunct app <laughs> called AMP. Okay. Uh, AMP. Uh, this was launched in 2022. So a couple yeah. of years ago uh, in April, and this was going to be the new home for Nicki Minaj's Queen Radio. And yeah. so, you know, I, can, I told you I'm a barb, so yeah. I go where the queen calls you to go. <laughs> but then when I went there, it turned out to be not just a, a an app for barbs, it turned out to be a whole community for multiple people who are just interested in music. Yeah. And so later on, we had little Uzi come on, oh. we had uh, little Yachty come on, and he was doing shows, Tinashe was doing shows, Coco yeah. Jones, and then eventually, Nick oh, yeah. Cannon started his morning 
morning show with uh, DJ Abby De La Rosa. Yeah. Uh, I follow Freeze, uh, the King the Cannon, crew. Javen, yeah. as well as Courtney B and Mason on the mic. And so they had a morning show every single day from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, yep. which is around the time I'm getting ready to go to work. You okay. know? So it ended up being an energizing you know, uh, like uh, 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 event because I was like, okay, now I wake up early to catch the show, but then I'm also getting ready to go, to, you know, to to go to work. So yeah. I don't feel, you know, the stress off the getting ready to go to work. You know, sometimes it's like you wake up, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. one of those days. But it gives you, you a jolt. You get a jolt. Yeah, yeah. You know, listening to Nick Cannon, you know, do the spins yeah. <laughs> on the radio. Yeah. You have all the the people who are in the chat with you, the fanons, right? The fans, the fanons, <laughs> <the cannon, laughs> yep. who are you know cracking jokes. Whether it's motivational Monday, it's yep. worship Wednesday, or Freaky Friday. Day, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then by the time you get to work at 9 a.m., you are so energized for the work that you're doing. And so we would do that on, you know, three hours a day, five days a week for a really long time. And uh, I, you know, he started getting to know my name on the screen. Because you were, you were lighting it up. I you was were responding. The conversation. Yeah, you were, I'm the stimulator. You were stimulating. You know? That's what I do. That's what he does. <laughs> that is what I do. That's what he do, yo. But also, he was very interested in science and the science elements that, you know, I was bringing in. So we would yeah. have debates about, you know, tidal waves. Uh, wow. <laughs> how they as accurately portrayed uh, in movies and in anime as, yeah. as we see in real life. Yeah. They're not. You know, the conversation about <laughs> zodiac signs, yeah. does that have any relation to science? Which the answer is no. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know that is astronomy, not astrology, right? Astronomy yeah. is, is a difference. Is, is the big difference. Yeah. Astronomy is the science. Yeah. Yeah. And so things like that uh, allowed me, to, again, to have more visibility with them, but also allowed um, uh, the conversation to, to, to evolve. And so eventually he invited me in the studio. He said, you have to come to the studio he, after man. he learned that I'm in San Diego, which is like two hours away from That's Los right. Angeles. He's from San Diego. He's from San Diego. He lives in LA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, the show happens in uh, in LA. And so he said, yeah, just drive up and uh, we'll have you here. I could not believe it. Wow. I could not believe it. I was like, I'm taking PTO for this. Did, <laughs> what did he say that in the chat? Did he say it in the chat or he no, like such a message? Like, he didn't say it just once. He said it a number of times. We got to get you on like, the show. You was like, we're going to make this happen. Because at first I was just like, oh, you know, famous people. That's what, you know, right, you say right, stuff. Right. You know? Like, I was camping, like, yeah. oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And then I was like, no, no, no. Uh, when are you coming to the show? Like, we need yeah, dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can schedule you in. And then wow. every day you like kept on saying stimulator stimulator when you stimulator coming through they had you on the couch yeah. man or whatever seat you were yeah. on dropping facts yeah, I, mean, I mean up, up to today I am now known and he dubbed me this the resident science expert I love it the daily cannon show Listen. and so I went in there and I did my little experiments I showed them a little experiments bro. about proteins we bro. had a whole conversation that lapses from Zimbabwe through my career trajectory to now San Diego Listen, uh, y'all gotta follow him awesome. by the way and this, I know we know we, but y'all gotta follow the stimulator <laughs> on Instagram yeah, we're going blood Later. You can see all this yeah, dope yeah, stuff yeah. he's talking about, right? All yeah, of his yeah. experiences. Please, yeah. uh, where else should people follow you? I know we. I am on every platform: Twitter. I'm on yep. Twitch. I am yep. on TikTok. I am also at stimulator.com. Uh, everything is stimulator. S T E A M U L T E R. Okay. So stimulator. <laughs> stimulator is not goodbye. It's stimulator. And folks who follow him already know you heard yeah, that yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, Listen, yeah. man, I got one more pop culture reference Please, before yeah. we move on. And you just got to break it down, connect to the biochemistry, however you can. Um, Beyonce. Oh. <laughs> What are you trying to do? <laughs> I knew it. My I God. knew it. I knew oh it. Listen, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead, cook. Yeah. Go ahead, cook. Beyonce, I would say I'm like half and half a barb and a beehive. Like, yeah, yeah. Beyonce was my first ever concert. Wow. That's number one. Wow. Okay. And okay. it was a religious experience. Okay. <laughs> you were, uh, the you were taking higher. Show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elevated. <laughs> and then most recently, the Renaissance. Oh, tour? man. That's, that had to broke a lot of records too. I've been seeing that everywhere. Broke a lot of records in my house. Okay? Yeah, because that was expensive. <laughs> it was expensive. Them tickets. Okay? I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think Beyonce is really somebody who is a versatile talent. Like Man, yeah. the voice of yeah. a generation, yeah. right? As a singer, like mm -hmm. she's able to really be a ballad singer but yeah. then she's also an entertainer in terms of like dancing nice. choreography right. think of the single ladies video iconic yeah. forevermore oh man right? yeah and then don't don't sleep on Beyonce she do a little rap okay? she oh all, she dropped bars she, she, oh, little, you know what I've heard this, I've heard a little bit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. her and Jay-Z okay yeah, like, and listen, you know don't when sleep. they get together and then you know when my girl Nikki and, and Beyonce get together oh, that's for all those remix yeah, that's okay. just it's the hit right there yeah 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 <laughs> so any any go-to Beyonce like songs or lyrics that you like to think about when it when you connected with science in any type of way any go to yeah for sure I think her song from 2020 Juneteenth when okay. it dropped that yeah. song was super powerful it was yeah. super relevant at the time it's called Black Parade yep 
uh, where <clears throat> it's basically acknowledging this idea that, for instance, in the LGBT community, mm -hmm. I'm also gay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it started off. You know, now we have Pride Parade, right? right this is something right. that is now known globally. It's a celebration every single June, right? But yep. that's not how it started. Mm -hmm. It really started as riots, right? And mm -hmm. so, uh, because of a lot of oppression against the LGBT community mm -hmm. in the '60s, uh, Black trans activists actually started rioting against the police who are arresting them unjustly mm. and so they would riot against that injustice and those riots later on culminated to become the pride parade so oh. it started off as a fight and it ended up as a parade so, wow. and i think you know in many ways what beyonce was saying with black parade is yes you know right now we are fighting for rights it's particularly as black individuals with yeah. you no know, black lives matter or right. these right you know these uh, uh <clears throat> marches that we're having yeah. across the nation particularly yeah. at the time 2020 2020 yeah. George, okay. Floyd, George Floyd, and, George all that. Floyd yeah. and all that it was it was a lot right and mm -hmm. she was saying right now yes we are fighting it is you know it uh, uh, it is a a, a struggle that we are fighting with right now, but eventually it's going to become a parade. Yeah. If we stay on the course, it's going to become a parade. Wow. And in the same way, I would say for STEM students who are <clears throat> seeking a career in STEM and finding that super hard and difficult, not finding their community, yeah. you know, access us, access stimulate, access STEM, on, STEM media, because yes, it is a struggle right now, but if you are consistent, if you are, are, are um, tenacious right. <laughs> through it, it'll eventually become a it'll parade. It'll become a parade. Listen, yes. I, we gotta let that Black breathe. Parade. We gotta let that breathe, right? <laughs> All those late nights of studying, yeah. Those bad grades, mm -hmm. those times you wanted to quit, yep. You getting calls from home, people saying, "Hey, okay. this is happening." And you're like, "I'm in this lab, and this is going on back Speak with my family." On it. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's 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 not beauty at first, yep. but if you keep on, yep. that ashes is gonna yep. turn to beauty, and that fight is gonna turn into a parade. Yep. Oh man, you gotta give me something. We gotta let that. <laughs> we gotta let that breathe. That's a moment right there. That was real, Joe. Yeah, yeah, that was true. real, Joe. Stuff. It's true. We gotta keep that. <laughs> we gotta keep that stuff No, I love it, man yeah. And if Thank you want you. some supplementary media I yeah, did yeah. a video about this specifically uh, Hip Hop by Chemistry mm -hmm. uh, Episode 5 This was about Black Parade And yeah. I really break it down In all of these different contexts And then even link it again To uh, Science and the Struggles It's yeah. something I've thought about Quite a lot Because really Once uh, <clears throat> Once marginalized folks mm -hmm. Have the power of education mm -hmm. The impact yeah. that we have on our communities yeah. is generational. You know, right. it builds a whole new avenues. And it's not just an impact on our communities, it's an impact on the world. On the world. I mean, take you, for example. Oh, man. Maya, you were literally on Black <laughs> Ambition with Pharrell yeah. Williams. Yeah. I mean, you've built a whole brand and company around yeah. merging these two fields, media yeah. and STEM. Yep. This is something that didn't exist before. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now you are... You know, charting that path. Yeah, Your community right. is fueling something that didn't exist before because you were given the opportunity yeah. to do that. And you took that opportunity with Tenacious Enough to actually <laughs> follow sure. it all the way through. Sure, sure. And so, yeah, when she says bees are known to bite, you hey. know, <laughs> she means, you know, the Bay Hive, of course, is known to bite. Go, you know, hey. we buzz around and when you hear, we're known to bite. Hey. But that's because, yeah, when people are given the, uh, when people have the power of education, they can make remarkable oh, impact. Oh, man. So, yeah. Dangerous. Danger mm -hmm. at that point. No, I love it. I appreciate that man and my thing is really connected with people like yourself i mean that's why the show is called technical creative now because i feel like there are a lot of us who have the intelligence i mean you, you're breaking down biochemistry concepts <laughs> and these are basic concepts you're breaking down first of all like you can really blow our minds if you wanted to but again you you have the creativity you have the passion you have the culture you have the story thank you all that is necessary i think because the world as you said, mm -hmm. will benefit from us unlocking the genius in so many more people. I agree. So, yeah, man. Thank you for that, bro. And I think, you know, they, currently the problems that are addressed by science mm -hmm. are dictated by who's in science, right? Mm. Who is at the helm of what gets funded, what right. questions what problems? Answered. What problems are important to solve. Exactly. Mm. Who determines that is the people who are in science. And so that means the problems that exist in communities where there aren't many scientists, yeah. those problems are never addressed because they are never ranked as high priority. Not at the and table. Exactly. So in yeah. order to attack unmet medical needs or unmet you know, needs that are uh, global, yep. we need more scientists of every single background. For we need sure. to diversify science in yeah. the same way we diversify our thoughts yep. because we know different solutions when they come to the table is the most effective way to address a problem. So. That's it, man. Well, this has been good, man. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to keep moving though. I want to get into like some like clear. I mean, you've already been dropping jewels, but let's get into some advice, right? Yeah. Because 
you're doing something that's highly technical. Maybe you can give us a quick synopsis of like what you do on a day-to-day basis now, and then maybe share with us maybe, let's say, three qualities or three skills or whatever that people should keep in mind if they want to go into your line of work. Mm-hmm. They're like, yo, Dr. Mm-hmm. Mook, mm-hmm. like he, he's designing molecules. Yeah, yeah. Give us a little more clarity on what that means, right? <laughs> and yeah. then um, tell us what, what are the top three, you would say, qualities a yeah. person needs. Well, outside of my uh, <clears throat> job as founder of a Stimulator, as yeah. a science communicator, mm-hmm. I have a nine to five yeah. and my nine to five is as a principal scientist. My background is on protein design. So making proteins on the computer, simulating them using originally physics-based models. Um, and then now more re- recently, artificial intelligence models. Uh, so neural networks channeling those to build a library of information that we can draw on to actually make molecules that are relevant today. And so... And by the way, library information meaning like <clears throat> you saw how other molecules behaved and how just like a database maybe and that you can yeah. pull on and use sort of as like your options of how you could build yeah. future molecules. Yeah, well, this actually connects with you. You're a structural engineer, yep. right? And yep. so you know that shape and form influences function. Right. This is very true on a macro scale, yep. as in bridges, as in buildings. you know buildings, yeah. but it's also true on a molecular and micro scale. So molecules like proteins have yeah. a specific shape, which you call structure. Entire field is dedicated to understanding the shape and structure relationship. It's called structural biology. Yeah. I'm a structural biologist, uh, but my field which is protein design specifically, uses structure to now design new molecules. So Mm -hmm. now we understand how molecules uh, uh, shape, sorry, how molecules form these shapes and the shapes influence their function. Now we can create specific molecules that address functions that nature has not decided to make or has not yet yet made. It's it's not out there, so we can make one. Exactly. We know, let's say we have a a, a lock, right, that we want to uh, unlock. Mm -hmm. We know keys that potentially can fit into that lock, but I might not, you know, connecting all the way. There's a right. missing piece. Right. Now we can craft brand new cre- keys yeah. <laughs> that will fit into a lock that we have been wanting to unlock. One right. exa- example problem that is existing in the world in general um, is climate change, right? This mm-hmm. is a problem that did not exist before, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. we need new tools to address that problem. Um, and I think there are a lot of protein designers, myself included, so who are interested in this area. Get yeah. out of here. So there, there's a molecular approach to climate change? Yeah. What? I mean, so our world is built on molecules. That's true. I mean, uh, <laughs> so duh, there's a right? molecular molecules approach. Everything. So that makes sense, right? <laughs> when I say like, yeah. But I mean, I just, you wouldn't think about that because you always hear people talk about, you know, mm. gas emissions obviously is part of it. But, you know, we, we usually talk about things that are more macro. But you're saying that you, you can get down and like exactly. change the way you're designing molecules mm. that have a impact, a ripple effect. On our climate change situation. Yeah, and this is something we go through. This is a course that is at Claflin University. You know, uh, uh, this is a course offered by uh, Dr. Panasic. This is taking a structural biology approach with proteins uh, to address climate change in a world setting. And this is an international course available for master students all over the world. So when you talk about what kind of skills, you know, I would encourage students to acquire early on, I would definitely say coding skills very early on, especially with the advent of ChatGPT. There's no reason why anybody should not now (laughs) learn how to code. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's now something that we all have in our phones, ChatGPT, and you should learn early on. But also just getting a breadth of knowledge of the databases that are out there for free. The NIH has crafted several mm. b- databases for scientists like okay. myself, but also citizen scientists like Stimulators. Yeah, there you go. And the followers of Stimulator. <laughs> and the followers of Stimulator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and and the one example is the Protein Data Bank. Yeah. And this is the one that I constantly uh, bring uh, forward and talk about often because we learn a lot about the structure of molecules and proteins out in the world. You and I are talking right now. Mm -hmm. There are small particulates of saliva that are floating in the air. (laughs) It's kind of gross when you think about it. It is gross. (laughs) Saliva has a really fundamental function in our bodies. It helps break down the food to give us energy as soon as it has contact with our mouth. And what helps break down that food is a specific molecule called called saliva, right? It's a a protein amylase. uh, which is an enzyme. Yeah, enzyme, yeah. And now we know the structure of this enzyme because of structural biologists who have been able to actually take an accurate representation and picture of the structure, wow. which now means we can modify <laughs> you can you, you can change saliva and make yeah. it a little bit more, or you can make similar molecules. No, we can do both, but really we know that saliva molecules, amylase, uh, break down carbohydrates, yep. right? And they break down these large starchy stuff. This is how we get, uh, and they break them down to glucose and this is how we yep. get energy. And so if we know the structure that breaks down large complex molecules like carbohydrates, now we can engineer industrial level uh, molecules like saliva get to break down the carbohydrates that 
are complex in trees, in plants, break down, you know, uh, uh, break down this in a, in a way that would not release so much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere oh. that is causing global warming and hence climate change. Yeah. And so there are, there are <laughs> intrinsic benefits in learning these lessons. And I think, you know, students early on, it's never too early to learn coding. I think, you know, yeah. you learn very, very, very early on. I think a lot of people right now are uh, interested in making sure that kids go to school right. uh, very early on, young kids get yep. going to college and this kind of stuff. And, you know, that's all well and good. And I think that is a wonderful uh, area of, uh, of, um, of pursuit. Yeah. My focus, however, is keeping students in college. Once you get there, right, you're right. what are the tools that you Retention. need to stay, right. stay, stay with? It. And that's how we college. started on that yeah, too, yeah. man. You mm-hmm. mentioned coding. We had our uh, first hackathon. You did? Yeah. yeah Game changer that. hackathon in November. <laughs> so that. yeah, we're right there. But give me one yeah. more before I ask you my last question. You mm-hmm. said coding, get to know databases. Just give me one more skill or quality that you would. Yeah, I would really say uh, critical thinking is a skill mm-hmm. that people don't really necessarily think of as an active skill. This is something we're crafting right now with Steam Olympics. Yep. I started Steam Olympics yes. in uh, June of 2023. Okay. Season one uh, basically took uh, content creators who may or may not have any background in science, but mm-hmm. they just had an interest, number one, in reality TV shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and number two, in money. <laughs> we offered a $1,000 grand prize and 20 creators started off at the beginning, yeah. voting each other off every single day until one person would win the $1,000. You had to vote each other off. Yes, oh, and man. The, the key element was you had to win immunity in order to not be voted off, much like Survivor. Yep. And how you won immunity was by answering STEM-based questions yeah. or STEAM-based questions yep, in this yep. in this context yep. and now you know we've done season two and we're looking forward uh, season three where we're actually having barbs uh, <laughs> Nicki Minaj stand yeah. be the main class because if you can write a lyric or even understand the lyrics of Dumbo and Tundra yeah, yeah. uh, nuances yeah, of metaphors, rhyme schemes, yeah. then you can write a protein from scratch you can make your own protein from scratch to address the specific need that's in your community Bro. now that's what we're crafting and we're even hoping to publish that in fact two students of uh, Steam Olympics season one actually presented their work at yeah. Abracamps, which yeah. is the annual biomedical research uh, conference for minoritized students. Right. This is an international conference with about 3,000, 5,000 students every mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Schools come from everywhere to recruit these uh, underrepresented minority students. Um, and so it's a large conference of importance. And we had two of our stimulators yeah, from, <laughs> from the Olympics, from Steam Olympics yeah. present their work in a poster Love fashion. It. Kamara Ice and Ama Nicole, shout out to hey, both of them. Hey, shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. And we had a booth there, you know, stimulator. That's dope. Natalie Spradley. Shout out to Natalie. We got to get <laughs> Recruiting future, you know, stimulators. And so, yeah, yeah, right now we're definitely looking for more students who are interested Please. in this area. Sit, so, yeah. Listen, we got we to gotta support that some kind of way. Stimula- hey, for those who are wondering, y- now y'all see why we have them on the show this is this this is a show made for people like this guy dr yeah, mook yeah. so thank you so much man here's yeah. the last question though man i gotta let you go thank i know you. you it's been a long day but listen um we like to ask our guests to give advice to their previous self mm-hmm. so that's sort of you know go back in time what you said to yourself let's say early on in your process yeah. but also give your future self some words like what would you say to somebody or not somebody to the stimulate the stimulator <laughs> in the future that watches this and you look at yourself now in 2024, what what words would you have for that previous self and that future self? As a matter of fact, if you could say it directly to camera, that'd be good oh. before we let you go. Oh my, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, Stimulator, AKA Mook, <laughs> um, you're on the right path. Uh, it might not feel like it all the time. It, in fact, might feel really hard. Um, it might feel lonely most of the time, but you're not actually alone. Uh, the more you continue on this path and on this journey, you're going to find so many like-minded folks like you, people who appreciate your gifts, people who appreciate your talent, and you're going to grow a community of stimulators like yourself uh, and other MOOCs. So stay on the path, stay consistent, and don't be too hard on yourself. And future MOOC, future stimulator, (laughs) Uh, be more humble, man, okay? (laughs) (laughs) We know you're killing it right now. We know you're killing the game right now, but just, just, you know what I'm saying? A little (laughs) for humility, just a little bit, okay? (laughs) I love it, I love it. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Appreciate it, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, man, come on, listen, you already know. I'm so glad we made it happen. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Stimulator. (laughs) 